Hey folks, this is Westbound for Westbound Music coming right at you as we have started to compose for Score Relief 2024. I hope you all had a nice holiday and nice transition into 2024. And today I'm going to introduce you to something which if you started out, starting out like I did a couple of years back, uh, you may want to be aware of. It's about markers and uh, SEMTI code which is important in order to uh, get the synchronization right and, you know, actually set your cues, your cue markers uh, aligned with the spotting sheet. Okay, without further ado, and, and also I'm going to address something that I have uh, kind of blew the whistle on or raised the flag about because it had me confused uh, for a very long time and it took a little bit of learning curve to figure it out and I'm going to share it with you today. All right, the first thing uh, in general is you want to make sure that you have your arrangement section displayed by clicking on this little triangle here. And that uh, displays marker, movie, signature, and tempo. In my case, if you right-click into the right gray area, you see that, okay, here, um, you see that there are check boxes for these tracks here. You could also select arrangement, transposition, beat mapping. I'm not using those, so we're going to focus on those today because they are the, mo the main ones, the most important ones. Okay, so first of all, yeah, you want to make sure that your uh, transport section is displayed in such a way that you see the SEMTI code. Well, what I have here is um, custom, let's check a take a look here, custom mouse control bar and display. Uh, you want to make sure that positions is displayed and uh, time signature, tempo, key signature, uh, if you need that. But these are the main ones here. And uh, initially, every movie starts out at one hour and zero minutes, seconds, and frames, and ideally at bar one. And where do you find the setting? You go into the I'm sorry for looking left, that's where my big screen is, so... Uh, you go into the file section and then project settings, synchronization. And uh, there you find uh, the sync mode, which is set to eternal. Mean, internal meaning to say that logic is the clock and it syncs everything else. If you had like in the old days of analog gear, you could sometimes uh, have slave machines, quote unquote slave machines, like uh, attached machines that uh, were synced using a, a special code on one track of the tape, which would do the syncing of the machine, so they would all be, you know, the same speed and so on. So um, the clock is, in, in this case, our DAW, in this case, Logic. Frame rate is set to 24 for movie uh, theater uh, for Europe and the states i think it's uh 29 dot 97 for drop frame and 30 for non drop frame and 25 is for uh, uh tv so we're going to leave it at that if that is not uh if the movie that you're about to bring in which we're going to see in a second if that is a different frame rate then you get a prompt asking you to adjust it and you should adjust it and match it with the original movie okay then also uh, bar position one, like I said, that's here, and uh, set to the SEMTI code here, initialized. All right, let's close this window for now and click on movie, open movie, and bring the movie in. Takes us to the directory. Yeah, I've already prepared that. I uh, already have a file folder, and it has by default the folders audio files, bounces for bouncing out the sound. Uh, movie files um, and I filed the movie into the according folder click it here bitsy code is also it's the same as empty it's just a different uh, nomer okay let's open this and now it asks us whether we want to open the movie of course extract the audio track yes for reference we're going to do that now because there's an audio stereo track embedded in the movie file uh, if you work with the individual WAV files, which you can also do, you may want to uncheck this box. We'll, we'll leave it on for now. Okay. Now it brings in the movie. It takes a little bit on this older machine. Let's kind of shrink that a little down so we can see something. You can see that it, uh, it extracted the audio like we asked it to and positioned it also at bar one 
and with this little lock here this is important this means that the audio is synced to the SEMTI code embedded in the movie this here is the movie region this track here and what we don't see yet are markers because we're gonna come back to that in a second first of all I need to address something like I said that had me confused for a long time because now our SEMTI is set to 1. If I move the playhead or initialized, if I move the playhead and actually where the movie starts and the SEMTI code becomes visible in the window here, it no longer matches that which we see in the transport section and I would expect that to be the same. Of course it no longer is because uh, and it took me a while to figure that out and so I'm um, sparing you that I'm sharing this video with you in order to not have to figure it out on your own in countless hours so let's go first back to where the movie is at the initial setting of the SMT see here that is uh, that reflects now the correct setting but now it doesn't match with what we see in the transport section and to me this was confusing so the first thing we want to do is uh, kind of you know fix that and you go back to the project settings synchronization and uh, we can see that there's a checkbox enable separate empty view offset and we click that and I already you know prepared that and now we see that it's at uh, bar 4.1, 4, and 1, and uh, this is where the actual embedded SMT code is at this initialized setting. Okay. Now, when we move the playhead, it should always be the same as in the actual SMT in the video, and it is. See? It says, I'm sorry, this says um, three seconds. It says three seconds here. What's the last two digits? That is increments in 100%, and that is the other thing that had me confused. This is not the frame rate, because once we move uh, frames, because the last digits here, these are frames, are supposed, I mean, in the, in the sorry, in the SEMTI, the last two digits are frames, the why does it always display this little thing here? Uh, the last two digits are frames. The second digits from the right are uh, seconds, minutes, hours, or vice versa. Hours, minutes, seconds, frames. And the last two digits in logic are not frames, but are these 100% 100, 100 um, steps or increments. And so that 17, now it doesn't exactly match with uh, again with what we see because these increments see so you may wanna I mean it roughly matches now six frames six frames so that's better nine frames nine frames and that's because of this uh, let's go back once more because I aligned it to where it actually displays the initialized SEMTI code, but not at bar one. And that's something that logic offers. I would assume it's the similar or same thing with other DAWs. Okay, um, the other thing you want to make sure is that the extracted track is matched or routed to some output stereo outs you don't want to mess with the signal here so it's best to have it routed to the stereo sum and uh, if you did work with the uh, um, individual files and bring them in here you want to also go back to bar one then bring them in by cl clicking the gray area add audio file matching them all with the left region corner here and then once you're done you want to also lock it how do you do that you right click on the track or on the region in this case it gives me only the option to unlock uh, if you brought in the fresh wave file tracks then you would have this option active lock empty position and that's what you need to do in order to make sure that your audio is at the right position with the pictures 
And when you did bring in the individual WAV files, of course, you would have to deselect this one. Otherwise, you get maybe artifacts phasing or something. You don't want that. Okay, uh, we leave that on. Now, I s talked about markers. These are your cue markers. We are provided a spotting sheet this time, or actually, um, with certain packages, you always get a spotting sheet. I'm po poor me. <laughs> I uh, only have the starter pack, so I didn't get the spotting sheets with the other projects. But for this one, it's for free, and um, it's important to work with the spotting sheet because that's in a real time, in a real professional situation, you would get notes and spotting notes from direction or from production, and uh, so you want to make sure that you adhere by them. And in order to help you with that, there's this track called Marker. Um, and now we want to place the markers by clicking on the plus sign here. It places a default marker. You double click into the name and call it, for example, CT Logo Animation, because that's where the logo animation starts. Then we move the playhead further along. This is where the blender logo comes in, right click, create marker, double click, Blender logo animation. And you just noticed, I guess, that it by default placed it to the next downbeat uh, of the nearest bar that we're at, that the playhead is in. It is in bar four, but not on the downbeat. Um, this is another thing that you may want to kind of look out for, um, especially when you have tempo changes like I placed here. You know, you just uh, click on the line here and that places a new tempo marker or um, tempo mapping, it's also called. So if you work with different tempos in your composition, um, try to get them to the beginning of the bar. Um, another way to do that is by working with beat mapping. Martin Eidenreich has a great video out on that. I don't like that so much. I prefer to not use beat mapping because it kind of has the tempo all over the place. You know, it forces um, uh, the downbeat to always begin at the at the next bar count, but it then kind of to me it looks almost random. It like speeds up the tempo to insane numbers 400 something bpm or something in order to match that and i find that again i find it confusing i'm i'm a simple simon <laughs> i need to have it simple so that's why i try to um, place the markers um, or place uh, tempo changes um, on the next bar if possible and uh, if that's not possible then you could work with uh, the signature here and create um, time signatures for example here um, we could like proceeding to bar um, uh, you know left to bar four you could place the playhead like half um, or one count less left to it then right click and say uh, not marker sorry here create time signature and have like, for example, two eights because that uh, is the equivalent of one uh, bar segment. What is the word I'm looking for? <laughs> and then, yeah, and then of course he would have to go back to the next bar five in this case and create another time signature, which is four four again. This is one way of tricking your timeline or your, your playhead into starting on bar on the downbeat when the cue changes. Just just an idea. That's how I work with it. Okay, um, logo animation and then let's move the playhead to where the movie actually starts. Starts here. Yeah. One more, create time signature. Not time signature, create marker, sorry. Create marker, and that is wing it start, for example. And that's where the movie starts. And you go on like that and you know, fix your, uh, finish your spotting and creating the markers and so on and so forth. 
And once you're done, you go to the navigate window or open the markers list and select them all by shift clicking them. And then in the options, you get to say lock to empty position. And that's important. So now if anything changes, like if your tempo mapping changes, if you introduce other uh, time signatures or move the bars around or whatever you do, um, you make sure that your cues don't get all messed up. That's another thing I had to learn the hard way by spending a lot of additional time on, on these things. Okay, I think that was all I meant to address for today. I hope it was not too confusing. I know this is kind of not too easy to wrap your head around in the beginning if you're starting out. And it actually, I just figured it out now because f from so many mistakes. And in order to spare you that, um, I share it here with this video. Also, uh, this kind of uh, solves the issue that I, that I placed in our Discord server for the YouTube community. And I'm going to link the video uh, in order to announce that, well, you, you you be the judge whether or not I figured it out and let me know and if uh, I, I'd appreciate you letting me know in the comments below or on the discord server ideally both and uh, if you thought this was helpful please come back subscribe and uh, happy composing happy scoring and good luck to everybody with this year's score relief 2024 this is was bound for what's my music see you all soon bye bye